Greetings, my name is Novi Matron. Today I'm going to teach you how to install MSN Messenger on Linux using Escargo and Play on Linux and Wine. This will allow you to use MSN Messenger in the current era and do so on Linux. The first step of course will be to register for an Escargo account if you don't already have one. Just search for Escargo Chat. Escargo Chat? Uh, no, Escargo Chat, and uh, it should be pretty straightforward. I'd recommend making a screen name so that you can use the clients properly. It's a pretty straightforward registration process. All you need then is your username and password remembered, and we can continue. So you'll want to go to the downloads page on escargo.chat and click here where it says MSN slash Windows Live Messenger. Pick your language, I'll obviously be going with English. And specifically, you want to download from this page MSN 7.0 patched. So it's this here, MSN 7.0 download patched. You can see I've already got one. You can see here's mine, it has a little one on the end because I've already done this before, obviously. So just uh, extract it with your file manager of choice. And you'll have these two files. Now to make this work, as previously mentioned, you will need to have Wine installed on your system and play on Linux. Now it's out of the scope of this video for me to teach you how to install Wine and play on Linux because it can differ depending on which Linux distro you're running. So go and figure out via another tutorial how to install Wine and how to install Play on Linux and come back when you've got that sorted. Now you want to open Play on Linux and you'll be presented with something similar to the following interface. So the first thing you'll want to do in Play on Linux is go to Tools, Manage Wine Versions because the Wine version I've had this working with isn't probably the one that was installed automatically. So at the top here you should go to Wine Versions AMD64 and you can see this version here, Wine 617 Staging. You'll have to go through this list on the left, click on the right one, and then press the, the greater than arrow here to install it. It'll go through a little quick installer where it'll download Wine 617 Staging and it will install it. After it's done that, close that little Wine Management menu and then click on Configure in the main Play on Linux window. Then in the bottom left corner, you'll have a little New button to make a new virtual drive. Click that. Go Next and press 64-bit Windows installation. And make sure you pick Wine 617 Staging. Press Next. Then you can type the name Basically, you can call it whatever you want. I'm just going to call it something identifiable. Escargo 70, so Escargo 7.0. Obviously, don't use any special characters. Just give it a minute to process. Okay, it's done. Now click on the Escargo 70 prefix on the side. And you'll want to go to the miscellaneous tab at the top. Now press run a Windows executable.exe file in this virtual drive. Now while it says that, it will really actually take any Windows executable regardless of whether or not it is an exe. So what you want to do is find that MSI that you downloaded earlier and double click that and it will start running. And as you can see, here's the installer for MSN Messenger 7. So like normal, just keep pressing next. You may want to decline these offers that you don't really want for toolbars and browser customizations, though they probably won't actually take any effect, so it doesn't really matter. And it's done. Okay, now click the run a Windows executable.exe file in this virtual drive button again. Go back to that same folder where you downloaded the thing, and now do this run after install.exe file. Play on Linux may say that that's crashed, and it might not actually do anything on Linux, but better to be safe than sorry. Just press cancel if this pops up. And now you're almost ready. You see, there'll be a few missing fonts if you don't set this up correctly. 
You see, Windows Live Messenger, MSN Messenger, it uses a few fonts that if you have missing, it'll look a bit different. It won't have any invisible text or anything. It just won't be completely accurate to what you're probably expecting. It'll replace it with some open source font, which works fine, but doesn't look exactly perfect. So we're just going to do this final step to install the fonts, and then we can get it working. So to do this, be in the miscellaneous tab again, where you were before, for escargot, and press open a shell. It will open a terminal, probably X term, and now you need to type the following commands. Type Winetrix core fonts, and then press enter. That's Winetrix core fonts. And now just wait and it will install quite a lot of fonts. Okay, it's done. Now, just to make sure we have one final font that is quite important to MSN Messenger, apparently, we need to install Tahoma, which means you need to type Winetrix space Tahoma. Okay, all done. So now close that X term window. We're on our final step, basically, other than logging in. Click on the general tab and then press the big button that says make a new shortcut from this virtual drive. It'll do some loading and then it'll scan the drive for all the executables inside of this wine prefix. Obviously when it's done we're going to select the MSN messenger executable so that you can launch it. So here you see the executable that you need to pick. MSN messenger.exe You can give it a better name like uh, MSN Escargo. You can call it whatever you want, basically. And then press next. After a bit of loading, it'll take you back to this screen. Just press I don't want to make another shortcut, and it will close. So if you close this configuration window now, you'll see that you have MSN Escargo here. And this is literally MSN. If you want to make a shortcut to it for your desktop, press this create a shortcut button here. If you want to make it a startup program, I'll teach you that in a little minute. But first, let's run it for the first time. Just click the run button and it'll start, or double click your shortcut that you created. Don't worry, it won't do this updating thing every time, it'll just do it once or twice. And here you can see MSN Messenger in all its glory. So just click the sign in button and you'll be asked for your credentials. So now you need to put in the username and password that you've registered with on escargo.chat. So my username is novichan at escargo.chat. There we go. And then press OK. Beautiful. I don't want to join your customer experience program, Microsoft. Sadly, nobody I've added is online right now, so I can't actually show you the messaging functionality. But that's the thing. That's why I'm making this video. Feel free to add me on MSN and we can talk. But I can assure you, everything works as you would expect. I've used it before, when it isn't a ridiculous time in the morning and people are actually online, and it's pretty good. So here's onto that last part I promised. How to make it a startup program. You'll have to enter your startup applications to UI. Basically the place where you set what your startup programs are. If you don't have one on your desktop environment, it's a little harder, but you can basically figure it out. You essentially have to set your DE to run a command when it starts, which is basically what launching a program is anyway. You'll probably have something like this. Just add a new entry, call it whatever you want, MSN, comment MSN, and the command. This is the important thing. The command is going to be based on the name that you gave the virtual drive wine prefix. So as you can see, I called mine escargo70. So what the command is, is play on Linux space dash dash run space escargo70. And then press add. And if I scroll down to MSN here, you can see that it's an entry and it will run this command on startup, which will then run MSN using escargo. I will note as one final important thing, if you want to be able to close this play on Linux window, you have to launch Escargo either from a shortcut or as a startup program 
or else when you close this window, MSN will close. But if you make sure you launch it from your shortcut, or using the command I just taught you, you'll be able to just have it open as it's in a standalone window without requiring the Play on Linux window open. And as you can see, it works just fine. Just make sure to launch it from the shortcut that you made, or from the startup program that I taught you a second ago. But yeah, that's it. Have fun, and hopefully I'll see you there soon. See you next time. Thanks for watching.